Investment Bureau Movie Review. David Norris, not son of Chuck Norris, because the father is dead and that couldn't be Chuck Norris, is a senator, almost, with a political career on the fast track. And then he meets Elise. He can't necessarily quite explain it, but there's just something about her, and she feels it too. But that wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't the plan. Whose plan? The Adjustment Bureau's. We're not entirely sure who they are, although the religious illusion is quite clear and harmless. But they control the way the world works. And they're not going to let the two of them be together. This basic concept is, of course, basically a spelling out of the basic plot, basic theme of half the Hollywood movies ever made, you know, defiance, standing against this, you know, force that tells you that you can't have things this particular way, you know, it's escapism for, you know, people who in real life don't feel like they can have things their way, you know, so that they don't revolt. Anyway, for that it actually does work out pretty well. It explores the theme nicely. I should point out that this is a love story, you know, it's, it is a science fiction film and it's a thriller, but it's also very much a love story. And that will turn some people off. It's definitely not an action flick. The trailer is quite... <sighs> yeah, it gives you the wrong idea about it. The acting is great. Everyone just really works. This has Papa Doc from 8 Mile as a sympathetic character. I didn't quite... I didn't even realize it was him until I looked him up after watching it. And given that both roles he just portrays so convincingly, yeah, I'm gonna be wanting to see him in more stuff. Blunt and Damon are really good together, and both of them are just really, really charming. You know, neither character is, like, perfect or, you know, entirely polished. They're both... A little bit crass, a little bit immature, but it just works. They feel real, and they're like people you would want to know and be around, you know? They're fun. Damon does appear as a guest on The Daily Show a couple of times, and I would say that at those times you kind of forget that he's a senator in this movie and not Matt Damon, the actor, but honestly, you kind of never entirely forget that it's Matt Damon you're watching. I'd say he's kind of just playing himself, but it works. He's a charming guy, you know. And Stamp, of course, has considerable gravitas. Do note that he's only in about half the film. Every single character is pretty nicely fleshed out. There's not really anyone who's just black and white. I mean, the supposed bad guys you feel for them, you understand their reasons. The... And there's also a nice bit of self-irony over the work that they're doing. The film never takes itself too seriously, you know. It never gets difficult to take it seriously and to accept the premise, I would say. But I am a sci-fi nerd, so... But, you know, it does have a little bit of fun with it. There are these <laughs> doors that are like shortcuts, and at one point, you know, one of these, you know, ominous men in black actually kind of gets lost and is like, ah, I hate this area of New York, you know. And in general, the humor just works really well. There's not really much of it that falls flat. It feels natural. You know, same as the connection between the two leads. The dialogue is great, except for one line that is really over the top. They wrote it to make a point, 
and half the line would have done fine. The other half of the line is, I would like to do something that would make the world a better place. And I'm sorry, no one actually talks like that. At least in that particular situation, you'll know exactly what I mean. What it's, it's cringe inducing, quite frankly. This is a fun and reasonably fast-paced, at least at points, film. You really get into, you know, the chasing and the clever. I'm not going to give too many of the, excuse me, details away, but basically agents of the Adjustment Bureau can, in fact, alter things. It's like the, the Matrix, you know. They change something, and suddenly you can't go that way. You can't quite do what you might think you can do in that situation, you know. And frankly, it does get a little bit grandiose, operatic at times, but anyway, there are some fun little battle of, battles of wit, you know, where Damon has to outsmart these guys. I should maybe also give away this... They mention ripple effects a couple of times, and any sci-fi nerd automatically knows what that means. Basically, this is the amount that, you know, this is what's going to happen when you change something, you know. It's often with time travel, there's no time travel in this, but it also works for this. You know, they're changing stuff and they can't change too much, but we do never see real ripple effects. It's just kind of a roadblock for, you know, the agency guys. It's, you know, why they can't just, you know, end it with their tremendous power right away. That pretty much says all there is. There, there's really no, there's, there are very few effects, and in general there's not really much of anything gratuitous in this. The chasing and such works especially because you get into these characters. You, you really do want to see these two people together. And that's really what carries the film, what makes all this work. I've seen a couple of people call this, like, Inception Light. I can sort of see that, but I'd maybe go one step extra and call it Ultra Light. It's really not... it's not Inception. But it does have some of that visual triggery a little bit, and the, you know, thinking your way out of a situation, not just reacting. And it does make you think. That is one of the best points about the film. It does make you ponder, you know, the choice is made, you know, is this the best, best path? Is free will real or an illusion? Now, I have not read the Philip K. Dick short story yet, and I am kicking myself off screen because I love the guy, and yeah, I've, I will be reading it, and maybe I'll make a video about how it follows it, if it does at all. I would maybe say the love story does, it's, it's a bit too Hollywood, I would say. It does hurt the overall product in that it's just a little bit too easy, you know. The two do not spend that much time together. It's a love at first sight kind of thing, and you just, I don't know, at the end of the day you do kind of have to wonder, but would it really work? I mean, a lot of the film is indeed about, you know, Damon trying to find a way to, you know, be with Emily Blunt, and you do kind of have to stop and wonder, wait, would it necessarily work out? Is he absolutely sure that the plan isn't, you know, the better alternative? And it is a bit too black and white with that, you know, it is very much you do as we say and follow the plan, which will for sure lead to this thing that I'm not going to give away, or you be with her and this will for sure be this other thing. It's a bit too much of that. The ending is also... Uh, the climax is a lot of fun, but the very ending clearly was hastily redone. And... I'm glad they redid it, but you can really tell that they redid it.
And yes, I believe that's what there is to say about it. So that was my review of the Adjustment Bureau. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.